I'm still getting high, still drinking. I, I haven't learned to listen yet. I haven't heard enough. I robbed a McDonald's after hours. No weapons involved, anything like that. I robbed him. I sneak in through the roof. I'm trying to see what I can get. Police come arresting me. I lie, I cheat, I steal. That's what Aggies do. I'm no different. What's up, everybody? My name is Mel, and welcome to Life Coaching by Mel. Here at Life Coaching by Mel, we speak truth. And when I say truth, I mean his truth, not my truth, not your truth, the Lord's truth. We talk about the word, the will, and the ways of God. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. We're here every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone hit that like button. Everyone hit the comment section. Let me hear what you have to say about this amazing topic. Along with that subscription, Make sure you hit that notification bell so you can get each and every one of my videos. Guys, we're getting to our next landmark at the time of this video. I be believe we're a little bit away from 7,000 subscribers. But well, whatever moment you're watching this video, please hit that subscribe button so you can help us grow even more. What I love to do on this channel is bring individuals on to share their story that can inspire us. Those that I may be inspired by, some that others may be inspired by this thing that we call life brings so many ebbs and flows and ups and downs and we all have a story we all have an individual journey and i believe we can learn all from each other and today i have a treat for you guys I have my amazing uncle andre is joining me today how you doing today huh i'm doing well i'm doing it well there for you and yourself man i'm doing honor, i'm doing amazing I, it's an honor to have you on i really appreciate you for joining us 19 90, 91, my first rehab, Topeka, Kansas, 30-day program. The um, treatment facilitator or the guy over, he says, I'm this perfect student, you know. <laughs> Andre, I think you're going to make it, man. This is my first time ever in rehab, a 30-day program. Yeah. Andre, I think you're going to make it. You, you. I talk the good rehab stuff. I can quote the 12 steps of AANA. I leave after 30 days. Within a week, I'm smoking crack again. <laughs> Within a week. Uh, a couple of years later, I'm still smoking. Going to work, mostly, until I finally lost that job because not going to work. But my grandmother died. She's here in Dallas. My parents, my family don't know that I'm doing drugs to this extent. Mm. I come home to go to her funeral. I remember going up there and being up there. I'm the star athlete in shape, muscles <laughs> built, solid. Yeah. I come home to my grandmother's funeral. I probably weighed 150 pounds, 140, 130 pounds. They saw all the weight that I lost. My mom just started crying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember her crying. My mom was a praying lady. We was raised in the church, <laughs> that holiness church. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, um, so I go back up to Kansas. Yeah, let me backtrack a little bit. Cause I told you I was in my first rehab. I wasn't in my first rehab until I came home. My mom saw me looking like that. Okay. A couple months later, I called her and told her that I was in that rehab in Topeka, Kansas. And that's when she yes, cried out to God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my son's getting some help. And um, it was it like I said, it was short lived. My sobriety was short lived. So that relationship I went with this here woman, this lady, Angela, it didn't break off, but in 91, I go to another rehab in Wichita, Kansas. This here supposed to be like six months to a year. And there is me and me when me and her breaks up. I knew she tell me she found somebody else while she's up there. But I didn't. I didn't, I ain't gonna say I didn't care because I did care, but I was seeing somebody in Wichita too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so 
So it didn't hurt me as bad. But in Wichita, I was there about six, seven months. Come back to Dallas, 91. Moved to East Texas with my father. My paternal grandmother had passed. I went down to go to the funeral. And um, I decided to stay down there. And I got got this job. I'm not I'm not drinking at this time. I had just left the rehab in Wichita. Um I met this manager at a church of chicken, Diane. So fast forward a little bit, we were together like 10 years. I have two kids for her. Mm. And the whole time we we were together, I was drinking, I was drugging. I was taking money out of the house, taking the money out of of her purse, whatever it took. Um, I was bad off. I was bad off. And and fast forward a little bit more. uh, Everything that an addict does to get high, he would do it. Hmm. Rob, he would steal, he would cheat. He'll do anything it takes to get his next high. And that was me. That was me. I was either getting high, figuring out ways to make money to get high, or actually doing a robbery or a crime to make money to get high. Hmm. So in 1998, I'm working for a Coca-Cola company up there in Lufkin. I'm getting high, pre- I mean, off and on. I'm going to work it. I worked there three years, so mm-hmm. I guess I wouldn't, I wasn't totally unmanageable, my life was. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, <laughs> but um, it was, but I guess I hid it from them very well. But anyway, at the tail end of that, I robbed the job. It was a vending machine company. We got candy machines, soda machines, cigarette machines back early nineties. It still has cigarette machines out. Yeah. And so I have every seat, every key to every machine in the city. I goes around emptying the vending machine um, cash box. Hmm. And I didn't go to work the next few days. So they knew it's me. They know it's me that I did it. Yeah. I go up there to pick up my last check. <laughs> they ask, they asked me, um, do you want to use this check to pay for the money you've been taking? <laughs> <laughs> and I need to pay for money. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so um he tell me, well, we already uncalled the authorities, so we just letting them handle it now. So mm. yep, they let they actually gave me my check. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me my check. And I went and got high with it. But eventually they caught up with me. That's my first stint in TDC. Mm. It was um what they call it, burglary of a building. In my crazy but i go down they call it that thing called shock probation mm. shock probation where you go you stay there 90 days you come home and then you finish out your sentence on uh probation i get out this early 90s now they tell me that i have to pay them 12 to 1500 dollars a month I ain't making that much a month. (laughs) So what did I do? The addict mind. I'm not going to probation no more. (laughs) They're going to lock me up eventually anyway. (laughs) I'll just let them catch me (laughs) on another rent. (laughs) So eventually they do catch up with me. They do catch up with me. And actually, me, my kid's mother, Diane, we busted up because of my addiction right so i go down uh, a little further down jacksonville um i'm living with my brother up in van 
And we come to back Jacksonville every weekend. I'm still getting high, still drinking. I, I haven't learned to listen yet. I haven't heard enough. Um, I rob a McDonald's <laughs> after hours. No weapons involved, anything like that. I rob him. I sneak in through the roof. Trying to see where I can get. Police come arresting me. Mm. I go to Cherokee County Jail. They tell me that because I already got the case up there in Lufkin. Then I got the case here in Jacksonville. So they told me if I admit to the case um, in Lufkin, I mean, say in Jacksonville, we're going to combine the two. So they gave me one year stay jail. Oh, wow. <laughs> what about restitution? I did mm -hmm. in the county, six months stay jail. Okay, we did that. I get out, and when I'm in state jail, I'm in the thing called um, therapeutic community. Mm. That's like a rehab yeah. inside the prison. So I go through that, I complete that, and everything. We have to march and all these things. But anyway, uh, I complete that, I do my sentence, I get out. It's 2000, 2001. I'm back in van with my brother. Guess who I hook up with after about 20, 22 years of four. So, Aunt Regina. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm clean and sober now. I'm looking good, feeling good. So we get talking on the phone. We eventually say, hey, let's meet up and hang out. I don't have a card this time. She come pick me up from down there. We come, we hang out. We have a good time. We decided to move in together mm. at your great grandmother's house over on, um, I forget the name of the street, but in anyway. the cliff. Yeah, yeah, in the cliff. Yeah. Uh, we move in together. Guess what happens? I go back to my addiction. Mm. This is in 2001, or so to say, so to say. And I have bouts of sobriety. I have bouts of uh, active addiction. Back and forth, back and forth. I lie, I cheat, I steal. That's what Aggies do. I'm no different. We get married in 2004. We married for two years. We get divorced in 2006. She couldn't take everything I was dishing out. Mm -hmm. All the insanity that I was giving her. I wouldn't blame. I don't blame one big. I don't blame nan woman for leaving me when they did. Yeah. Sick. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Well, so we do us in 2006. I moved back to Jacksonville with my brother. Me and her staying in touch, though. She got a job up here in Arlington. She's not happy with. It. She want to go and start a new. So we do it together. Me and her take a road trip. We, we ride down to, where we go first? Went to San Antonio first, seeing how it was. And we didn't like that. Went to Austin, we didn't like it there. So we're going to go to um, uh, Nacogdoches. I knew they got a rehab there where we both can stay. But on our way there, we say, no, nah, let's go to Galveston and see. Let's go down there to the beach. We end up staying in Gavis. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we marry. We remarried 2007. Exactly a little over a year after we divorced. That's 2007. We've been married ever since. Yeah. Bye bye. Clean ever since? Absolutely not. <laughs> I have put your aunt. To hell and back, man. The lies, the stealing, the taking from everything that Eddie does, I did it. 2016. I'm tired now. I'm tired, nephew. Yeah. I checked myself into the Salvation Army. This is my. Over the years, this is probably my 15th to 20th rehab. I've never, ever 
taking them serious. I do just enough to get by. This time was different. Because prior to this, I come home from work. Your aunt done moved out. Mm. <laughs> she done moved out. Ain't no where she was. This is like November. I, yeah, November. And I stay out there in my mess until February the 4th, 2016. About three, four months in my in that mess. And I checked myself in the Salvation Army ARC, Adult Rehabilitation Center. And I was serious this time. I was tired of hurting, man. I was yeah. tired. I didn't know where she was. I remember praying, Lord, bring my wife back to me. Mm. But if you don't, give me the strength to endure. That was my prayer. Mm. That was my prayer. And um, we have to stay in there 30 days before we can leave the building, before we can contact anybody on the outside. I said, Lord, your will be done. <laughs> my 30th day of getting off restriction, I go to the front desk. We had a lady working at the front desk. She said, Andre, come here. I said, yeah, what is it, uh, Miss such and such? She said, your wife called. I said, what? My wife called. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going to get some divorce papers again. <laughs> Get some divorce papers again. It's gonna be final this time. Yeah. But I call her, we talk. She wanna give me another chance. Let's see what this thing go. Come on, woman. She gotta be a glutton for punishment. Go <laughs> <laughs> through all this pain, this hell, this turmoil that I've put this woman through over the years. She either love me or she crazy. <laughs> I like to think that she she loved me. Right, right. <laughs> but um that was February 4th, 2016. I've been clean and sober ever since. Hmm. February of next year, I will have eight years clean and sober. Yes. yes. I haven't drank, I haven't smoked anything, hmm. no illegal substance. I don't even like taking aspirin. <laughs> <laughs> and, one thing, I mean, I, I know that I'm clean and sober. My wife know that I'm clean and sober. She she sees it and she tell me probably once once a month, at least, Andre, I'm proud of you. Oh. Andre, I'm proud of you. Yeah. I hear her at least once a month. She is, I'm proud of you. you <laughs> this funny. I guess when she see rent wins do, she says, I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, but uh, <laughs> um, I I remember Johan told me, she said, Andre, she said, I'll and cleaned up. I'll be darn if you get clean and sober and another woman enjoy the benefits of you being Ooh. clean. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll be darn. She said she gonna enjoy these benefits. That's I'm right. That makes sense. Let's go.